Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know that it's been a very long time, but so many things have happened and I want to give you a quick update as to what's been going on, what happened, and I want to talk a little bit about my experiences throughout this process of me being absent. So for one, I have had so many blessings in 2019. It's been, I mean, amazing. I found out that I was pregnant mid-year. So June 2019, I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter. Um, I also was in the search of looking for a home. And by a home, I mean a house. So yes, we are now proud owners of a house. First time homeowners. It has been such a huge experience for me. I mean, so many things have changed and I just I, I feel so blessed and I there's there's no words to explain like it's like overwhelmingly great things that have happened and I also had a really tough pregnancy I mean the first six months I was very sick um, it was just terrible I'm talking like I went to work and I was trying so hard to hide the fact that I wanted to gag every five seconds um, it was pretty tough. <laughs> I also was super stressed because I was kind of thrown into these overwhelmingly great opportunities. And I, you know, was in the process of searching for a home. And it's just like every weekend was super busy. During the week, it was super busy. So I literally had no time to myself. So on top of the fact that I felt sick all the time, I barely had an appetite. I had to find ways to kind of cope with this, uh, working through this and having conversations with my patients. It, it was pretty tough, but I made it through. I survived. And again, with all of these blessings, I, I couldn't complain. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very happy about that. I also wanted to talk about my prenatal experience as a whole, um, it's so crazy because, you know, so many people enjoy their pregnancy. And I did, you know, the first kick was amazing. You know, I would converse with her and like she would tell, like with communication, not tell me obviously, but she would kind of give me a kick or a punch and I would say like, hey, are you thirsty? Are you awake? Are you sleeping? Or I would tell her, okay, it's nighttime, no more kicking. And she would totally get that. So I mean, it's been great. The pregnancy was awesome. You know, I I didn't anticipate a lot of difficulties that I had, like with the whole sickness and, you know, just the pain of, you know, stretching, like my skin was stretching and my skin doesn't normally stretch. You know, I've always been thin in my entire life. So my skin has never really stretched. So for that to happen was like, oh my goodness. My skin, my I was itchy, and it's not like normal itchy. So it, it it's like I was itchy on my stomach, but I was also itchy like on my breasts, and my skin was changing color. I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, my hair grew like tenfold, and my skin cleared up dramatically. Like I was like, wow, thank you so much to my daughter. <laughs> she cleared up my skin, or maybe it was just the hormones, or whatever the case was, but. It was pretty tough, you know, it, it, it was very frustrating. I had to like ice my skin. Um, it's pretty funny because I would go to work with my stomach like banded because I felt like I had to control the amount of stretching that my skin was doing because if not, I would feel like, like too loose. I don't know how to explain it, but it was very weird. And my friends were, you know, so supportive you know, one of my friends were able to find like an ace bandage for me and kind of wrap my belly so that I would feel comfortable. Um, you know, I, I bought so many things to kind of control the stretching and the, the itchy and the pain. And like, I felt like I was getting like an umbilical hernia. It was like a mess, but I'm, I'm good. I'm safe. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm healthy, but just the process was pretty tough. I'm hoping that I don't experience that the second time around. Let's see if that even happens. Um, but yeah, I, I'm super 
like surprised at everything that I experienced because I feel like so many people had such a wonderful pregnancy and I'm like, yeah, that's the same thing's going to happen to me. And ironically, I, you know, I talk to prenatal patients. It's part of what I do. And a lot of them have not expressed anything that I was feeling um, except for the sickness. And nobody of my patients have ever felt so sick up until six months. So that was pretty surprising. But it is what it is, you know. I rocked it out and just did what I had to. Um, so my birth story was pretty tough. Um, I was in labor for four days. And just a quick snippet, um, I really wanted to give birth in a birthing center and I wanted to have a water birth and I wanted it to be magical and beautiful. And I fought for that. You know, I was in labor for four days. Uh, not to mention, I was not to mention, excuse me, that I was in prodromal labor for like weeks, two weeks before my due date, and I was late. My daughter was really late. She was born forty and five days, um, so it was pretty tough. I mean, I was in so much pain. I wasn't able to eat in those four days. You know, my mom was super supportive. My husband was there, and. You know, I had to time every single time I had an, a contraction and I was just pushing and pushing and pushing. And every time I called, you know, the midwife, I'm like, okay, let's check me, see if how dilated I am. I, I was moving at such a s small, tiny, little, tiny pace, like 0.5 or maybe 0.2. I wasn't really moving anywhere. I was not dilating and it was so tough because I felt like I was exhausted. I mean, four days having consistent contractions it wouldn't stop at night it's not like it's like oh yeah let's take let's give her a break no it was 24 7 pain 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 every five seven sometimes 10 minutes but it was consistent it took away my hunger i had to try to drink water but it was so difficult for me you know i was doing some stretches and all these exercises and the bouncing on the ball and all of these things and it was just super super tough but i finally was able to tell my midwife that you know what can i do and they said you know you can't be strong anymore you have to give in i understand that you want to have a water birth but at this point your body is not dilating and you need to get this baby out and I agreed. I was tired. I didn't have any energy. And they were concerned that I wouldn't, wouldn't have the energy to push when the moment came to it. You know, I did so much meditation and breathing exercises. And I studied for this moment. <laughs> but it just didn't work out for me. And I tried my hardest. You know, I, that's all I can say. That I did try my hardest. But I'm grateful for my family. They were there. You know, I was being supported at every step of the way. You know, the love that I was getting was amazing and it helped me push forward. But um, I think the toughest part was postpartum. Like nobody ever tells you what happens postpartum. So, and I mean the moment that baby is out of your belly. So they put my daughter on my chest, which was amazing. It was like a huge sigh of relief. And just uh, just FYI, I was pushing for three hours. Oh my gosh. I really hope that whoever's watching, whether you had a baby or not, I hope you have never experienced this. And I hope that you don't have to experience what I did. Um, it's typically not like that for first-time moms. I mean... And I was pretty active, you know, I did what I can to have a healthy pregnancy, but hopefully you don't have to go through any of that. But back to the postpartum, there are things that people don't tell you and it's, it pretty much sucks because I wish that somebody would have warned me or anybody that would have had these horrible experiences would have told me. But I'm pretty sure that every single woman goes through the same postpartum process. So they put the baby on your chest, whether, I mean, that's your choice. Some some women are like, no, don't put the baby on me. But I wanted it. And they had um, the delayed clamping of the umbilical cord, which was amazing. But the moment that baby is put on your chest, they're working on you. So they're like, okay, let's see. Did you tear? Did we need to stitch you up? 
So they try to distract you with the baby, but they're like poking and prodding and trying to control the bleeding. I had some excessive bleeding, so they really had to work hard to kind of control that. And I mean, they're stitching. Those stitches are not easy. I mean, you just push the baby out and, you know, they're going and just, oh, like you can literally feel everything that they're doing. And nobody tells you that, you know, as even if you have an epidural, I had to get an epidural, unfortunately. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want anything. I wanted very minimally invasive work on me, but of course it didn't work that way and I just couldn't handle it anymore after four days. It was excruciating. But I had an epidural and they gave me the max dosage and I still felt the stitching. And thankfully they were able to give me the option of, you know, injecting Novocaine to kind of ease the pain because it was intense. You know, I, I just went through three hours of pushing and then you're going to stitch me up and like raw, like, I was like, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. So I couldn't even like enjoy the experience with my daughter at that moment until they finally gave me some anesthetic. But, um, she was eight pounds, three ounces, 20 inches long, a big girl. I really didn't expect to give birth to such a big girl. But she's happy and healthy and she has so much hair. She does not have my hair, unfortunately, but I'm hoping that it changes because babies always change unexpectedly. They do so many things that surprise you. Um, she is about a month and a half. She's actually going to turn two months in a week. Um, it's been super awesome, you know, having her with me. I... I'm super tired. I mean, when they tell you that you are sleep deprived, it's painful. I mean, they say that, yeah, you know, get your sleep now. Forget about all that crap. You know, you don't sleep when you're pregnant because clearly if you've ever been pregnant, you can't sleep because you're uncomfortable at every moment. Um, and of course, with the frequent urination, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no. So I just, it bothers me that people say like, oh yeah, get, get some rest now because you're not going to get rest later. Okay. First of all, calm down. Okay. Yes. But nobody says it's painful. It's painful. You get headaches, you know, you're like seeing doubles of things and you want to eat something, but you can't because the moment that you try to make something to eat, there goes your baby wanting your attention. Um, and I mean, I love it. I don't care about the sleep deprivation. It, it really just, it doesn't bother me, but it just like crazy. You know, the healing process, the postpartum healing process was the toughest part for me. And I mean, it was just painful, like physically. I felt like, you know, of course you feel empty because you're no longer sharing your body with someone else, but it was just, excruciating. You know, you, you can't, you know, wipe yourself when you urinate, you know, it, you can't have a bowel movement without feeling some discomfort or a lot of discomfort. You know, it, it's, it's tough, you know, you're bleeding, you have so much going on. You can't lift anything heavy. You know, you can't cook, you can't clean, you can't do anything. You're like limited in so many ways. And I had a natural birth, thank goodness. But even then, like I, it took me almost a month to heal. I, I couldn't, you know, sit down like and be comfortable. It, it was tough. I, I feel like nobody ever warned me about that, you know, that it's going to be physically painful. And I think that the fact that I, I couldn't sleep, like my body couldn't heal fast enough. Like, I just couldn't get that, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like that's something that I, I'm hoping to express to you. If you do plan to have children, I'm not trying to scare you away. It's a beautiful experience, but I just want you to know that it's not easy and it's not something to be ignored. You know, it, it's tough. That part is tough. And if you don't have, you know, someone to support you emotionally and physically, you know, it's even worse. And I understand why people fall into postpartum depression because going through that is, is, is excruciating. But anyway, um, 
It took me a really long time. I didn't want any visitors to come because I just couldn't sit for too long. I couldn't walk long distances without feeling some pain, you know, or feeling like a rush of blood. You know, it it, it was ugh, it, it was awful. And, you know, breastfeeding is another ordeal. I mean, I, I really do love breastfeeding my daughter because it, it's a bond that, you know, can never be shared any other way. But it's tough. I mean, the pain, the soreness, the, you know, using certain bras are uncomfortable. You know, you, you can't even sleep on your stomach because your breasts feel engorged. When your breasts get engorged, it's so painful. Like, I was always curious to know what they meant. Like, when women said, like, oh, it's so painful to feel your breasts engorged. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't want to know anymore because I know what it's like and it's not fun. It's pretty painful. It's uncomfortable. It's annoying. I mean, at some point, I felt like I couldn't. I'm like, how am I going to leave the house? If I need to like pump my breast every three hours or I need to feed every three hours, but I make more than my daughter drinks. So I have to pump my breast no matter what. So whether I put her on my breast to drink, she doesn't drink enough to, to relieve my engorgement. So I have to pump. It's, it's something to get used to. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's literally something that's part of your routine. It's like, as necessary as it is to eat and drink and drinking water is like so essential because I feel like a huge part of your breast milk is water. Oh my goodness. It's, it's definitely, it's something, but I, I enjoy every moment of being a mom. And sometimes I can't even believe that I am a mom. I don't know <laughs> I can't believe I'm a homeowner, like a house, that I have a house. I can't believe that, you know, I'm a mom, that I have this huge responsibility to care for someone besides myself um, it, and to just share my life with someone besides my husband. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's obviously something I've always wanted and I'm super happy about it. I just, you know, when it happens, you're like, oh my goodness, it's happening. And so I, I soak it in, but I feel like it still hasn't hit me yet. But it's, I'm really happy in the way that things turned out. And I'm happy that, you know, I pushed through it and that things turned out the way that they did. I'm super grateful. And if there's anything that I can tell you, um, about my experience or what you can get out of it is that I warned you. <laughs> no, but um, I think that you should just really appreciate everything you have. And if you want something, just go for it. You know, stop waiting around. No, I'll, I'll get to it. Or no, it'll happen. Like, no, fight for what you want. I fought for getting, you know, for moving on to this step to being a homeowner. And I fought and I'm, I wanted to have this house or any house before I had started a family. And just because I started a family before I got my house doesn't mean anything. You know, I, I fought really hard. We were persistent. We were determined. We, we wanted this step to be fulfilled. We wanted this to be a successful process for us, and it was, um, and we we really pursued it. It was no joke, and having our daughter was just an icing on the cake. It was awesome. I mean, it makes our house a house. It makes it feel like home, you know? She is everything for us, um, but I'm so happy. I mean, the fact that my friends have been there to kind of support me, I feel like I'm going to get emotional <laughs> because it's, you know, it's it's not easy to, to be a mom and to do all of these, to have all of these sacrifices. It's not easy, but I'm so happy the way that things turned out. 
But anyway, before I start getting more emotional, <laughs> thank you so much for watching and listening. If you listened all the way through, um, don't be discouraged to start a family or don't be discouraged to do anything you want in life. You just have to just soak it up, say, write it down, get a board, write it down. Think about it every day. The law of attraction, that stuff works. No lie. Think about it and just say it as if it's already happened. Like if you want a, a, a Lamborghini, I have a Lamborghini and it's going to be in my backyard like very soon. Sure. You know, whatever it is that you want, you fight for it and you put that in your mind and you staple it into your brain and you do not let it go until you have it. Um, I mean, and just be happy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm so happy with the way things turned out. Like I said, I, I have no words, but anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you so much for sticking around and listening to my life update. I should be posting a lot more videos now that things have settled down a little bit. It is going to be tough for me because, of course, I am a mom, a first-time mom, so there's still a lot of adjusting for me to do. Um, but I will promise to make an effort, and that is the most that I can do. Um, I got a couple of new products as I have been home, so I'm going to try and review them for you. I have been up to date with this whole Diva Curl thing, so I will not be reviewing anything from Diva Curl. I have not used Diva Curl. That has been discontinued. And one thing I just wanted to quickly say is that the pregnancy did change my hair. I forgot to mention that. I have like, not straight, but like wavy here and then super curly down here and like random parts of my hair are super curly or super wavy. That's a little weird, but once I get a haircut, I'm hoping that, you know, it kind of just stabilizes. I hope that my hair comes back the way it was, but no big deal. I mean, it, it works for what it is. My hair still looks great, um, but I do have some new products that I will be reviewing, so stay tuned. Again, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. If you liked this, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me a DM at Curls by Bay on my Instagram and make sure you hit that bell so that you are able to see what I'm going to be reviewing next. And don't forget to subscribe. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Love you.